For many years now, I've been setting goals and I've really struggled with following through with many of them. I eventually switched the way I think about setting goals completely on its head. In this video, I'll share how I switched my relationship with goals. Hopefully you get a couple of ideas on how you could set goals to actually achieve more. Let's take a look. Many years back, I had a friend who ran marathons and I thought to myself that running a marathon could be something I could do. And I decided that I put my mind to it. I had a couple of months to train for the marathon. I ran the marathon and I took the compulsory picture in the finish line with my medal in my hand. And after the marathon, since I've been training for two months and running and doing sprints, running felt more like a chore than anything fun and I stopped training completely. And that's the challenge with the traditional goal setting systems, is that you set a goal and then once you've achieved that goal, you're gonna set yourself a new goal. And that usually requires quite a bit of effort. Another problem with traditional goals is that you set your goals way too high, so you don't even get started. And more often than not, life gets in the way of your goals you get sick or injured, and you don't end up achieving the goals in the first place. So getting motivated to start training again can feel like quite an effort. This is where identity-based goals come in. Let's take a look. In a nutshell, identity-based goals are goals that you set by describing a specific identity. This entails visualizing a better self or an identity you aspire to embody. Let's take a look on how you can set identity-based goals. Start by visualizing an ideal self. Who do you want to be? This does not mean a person or a role model, but an identity that describes, in words, a better version of yourself. Another important thing to note when creating your identity-based goals is to make them flexible. If you say, I'm a runner, and if you're not able to run for an injury or illness, it might make it harder to stick with the identity goal. Instead, you could use a broader wording like, I'm an active and healthy person. This keeps it flexible enough for you to include running, yet when not able to run, you can add behaviors that support your overall activeness and health. Adding a why to your identity-based goals helps out when the going gets tough and you lose motivation in achieving your goals. Outposts are close to the way we think of traditional goals. They provide direction and help with creating habits that support the overall identity-based goal. Let's say, for example, you want to live an active and healthy lifestyle. Striving to run a marathon could provide direction and help you to determine what behaviors you should engage in in order to reach the outpost. Outposts are, however, not a means to an end and therefore are not required to strive for your identity-based goal. One of the greatest pitfalls of the traditional goal setting system is what to do when life happens and you've failed your running a marathon goal. Not reaching an outpost due to injury, for example, does not stop us from doing other activities that support the identity-based goal. And therefore the system keeps us moving forward. Tracking your behaviors sparingly can help gauge that what you're doing is supporting the goals you've set for yourself. Ask yourself if the behaviors are actually supporting the identity-based goal you've set. Are your identity goals flexible enough? Are they going with the flow of life or against it? Reviewing your behaviors also ensures that you are in the Goldilocks zone. This refers to the habits and behaviors not being too hard, nor them being too easy, but just the right amount of challenge. When you're in the Goldilocks zone, you are more likely to continue the habit. So hopefully you get a couple of ideas on how you can start setting your own goals and actually achieving them. Identity-based goals together with outposts can be a really powerful tool for enforcing a positive ideal self. Embodying the wanted identity will also make it easier to create the habits and behaviors that support that identity. It's important to notice, however, that identity-based goals is not the same thing as dream boards or some visualization type of tools. The challenge with the dream boards is that they can create the illusion that you're actually achieving the goal. Uh, just by thinking about them. There are a few studies out there that show that the mind goes into a relaxed state uh, when you're just thinking about uh, achieving those goals and actually achieving them. I hope you found this video useful. Uh, if you did, click like. Thank you for watching and catch you later. Bye.